Hi, Toaster here from Aussie 8. Welcome to sunny Kununurra. Uh, I thought I'd uh, do a video to show you guys what we're taking on our great uh, lap of Australia. I have uh, Barney here and we've got a whole bunch of charging paraphernalia. We're also standing here at the yet to be commissioned Kununurra Fast DC Charging Station by Horizon Power. Sounds like it's going to be open sometime in the month of September 2023. I'm going to essentially show you three types of charging. We've got uh, trickle charging on AC and then we have uh, fast charging on AC and fast DC charging. So let's start with the trickle charging. So that's your slowest type of charging. So most cars would come with some sort of um, what we call granny charger or trickle charger. Uh, this is the Tesla one, or called the Universal Mobile Connector. It used to come standard with cars, but now you have to purchase it separately. Um, but when you do, it uh, has uh, two tails on it. And these allow you to use two different types of Australian sockets. One is your standard uh, 10 amp power point. And this is the uh, 15 amp tail. The difference here is that the uh, ground pin, the lower pin, is actually thicker um, and that allows for 15 amps of charging. These though are both considered slow AC charging. You would typically get 10 to 15 kilometers an hour back on your range charging through uh, trickle charging. And while these aren't standard, I bought two additional tails um, from third parties for the Tesla UMC. So these allow me to use three phase um, charging sockets which are fairly common in campgrounds and industrial settings. This is not recommended but we do have an ex a really long extension lead here. So if we are going to use that um, trickle charging on a regular power point, say at an Airbnb or whatever, sometimes, sometimes the power point is further away uh, from the car than the length of the Tesla granny charger has. So we just use an extension lead. It's not recommended because you can overheat them. So definitely uh, feel the cable when charging through it. And if it's getting hot, you can actually dial down the amperage. So how much you're actually drawing from the power point. So again, the standard is 10 amps, but you can actually dial it down in the car or the app to say maybe eight or seven amps. That will obviously slow down your charging rate. The other cable we have is a Type 2 cable. Uh, so some AC charging stations, like typically places like IKEA, um, they give you the charging station, but they don't provide a cable. So you need to bring your own, and that would normally be a Type 2 cable. Uh, so one end would go into the car, um, and the other end would go into a charging unit. That charging unit would actually look something like this and I actually have my own um, and the reason why is because I have brought along this uh, portable uh, Fronia Swap Pilot Go. Uh, the reason why I brought this along is because it allows me to draw the maximum current that I can from AC using three phase. Um, but as you can see with this unit, while it has a three phase plug on one end, it has no cable for the car on the other end, but that's where but that's where my Type 2 cable comes in double use. So I can plug it into the Fronius, like so, and the other end into the car. Um, so with this setup, I can get the fastest um, AC charging available, which is 11 kilowatts for my Tesla Model Y. Some, some uh, EVs will actually draw up to 20, 22 kilowatts, but yeah, this one, with this setup, I can do 11 kilowatts, which gets me back about 65 kilometers of range per hour. The last of the cables that I brought along is a three-phase extension lead. So again, if the three-phase plug, say at a roadhouse or at a industrial setting is too far away from where the car is parked, I'll just uh, pull out the three-phase extension lead. Pretty chunky cable. So as you can see, you know, in the early years of EV adoption, 
those of us that are traveling far and wide do have to bring along quite a cable collection to make sure that we make it around, in our case, make it around Australia. But once um, EVs become pervasive uh, and charging does as well, most people will not have any cables. Maybe, maybe might have one, one of the granny chargers just as an occasional top up at, um, on an Airbnb or whatever. But most people will find um, charging infrastructure like this available to them. And as you can see, it comes with its own cable. Let me grab one. So this is a fast DC connector. So with these, with this in particular, this chem power unit, you can get 150 kilowatts um, of, of charge out of this, out of this, which is, you know, what, five, six times faster than the 22 kilowatts that I was quoting before. So it's very fast um, using this. You can get back about eight to 900 kilometers of range at, at the peak of the charging curve. Um, but I wanted to show you the difference between fast DC charge connector and and just the regular type 2 connector. So as you can see, the top half is, the shape is essentially the same. All that the DC connector has is these two additional pins at the bottom, and these actually bring in the, the DC current. Um, the top pins are just used for communication. But on the AC one, the, the whole connector does both the AC connect charging and the communications. So when we were in Darwin, I used an EV fast DC charger um, and I can show you that vision now and I can show you the charging experience uh, for that. So this is the charging experience with, um, on the EV network. I've got the EV um, app open on my phone here. And as you can see, I'm in central Darwin, which is with the blue dot there. And it shows me that there's a charging station nearby with uh, four stations. It's actually not really four stations. It's two stations, but they have two different connectors, uh, Chatamo and CCS2. Most cars around the world, except for like North America, whatever, are standardizing on CCS2. So Chatamo is uh, less and less common, mostly used by Japanese manufacturers. Um, but as you can see, they've got a couple of stations here with two connectors. So what you would do is have a look on your station for the um, ID number. In this case, it's uh, MD001B. I would uh, pick the CCS connector. I would actually need to plug it into the car, so I will do that now. And then I would click the start to charging here on, as you can see, it's connected up to my Apple Pay. So it's a fairly seamless charging experience. Probably not quite as good as a Tesla charger with a supercharger with a Tesla car, but it's not too bad. It's getting better as well. Just click start charging. It's going to verify that it wants to charge um, my credit card on Apple Pay. I'll accept that. And away we go. I can hear some clicking from the unit. I've got a nice little text message there from EV saying it has started. Um, and we're on our way. So you could use the EV app here to check on the charging session. If you were to go off and you know, have, a, have a bite to eat or run an errand, you can see down here, obviously we only just started. So right now the current cost is zero. Energy delivered is zero. Many cars, including the Teslas, also come with their own app, and in there I can also track the charging session. So in this case, it shows you that my uh, car is 69% charged, and if we were to stay at this rate of uh, charging, which is 48 kilowatts down there in the middle, we've got about another 25 minutes to fully charge this car. Yeah, so with the connectivity, it's pretty handy. If this charging session was to stop, I'd probably get a notification from the Tesla app and maybe even from the EV app. Um, it is important as you walk away just to make sure that the charging session continues. On some of the older stations it can stop for whatever reason and there's nothing more disappointing than coming back to your car after having a meal and finding out that you have not charged at all. So do, do check it. For ending the session, um, with the Teslas, I do have to actually do an unlock uh, charge port from either inside the car or using the app. So I'll actually do that here. I'll go stop charging, unlock charge port, 
and I should be able to remove the connector. And that's pretty much it. If I go back, in fact, you can now see I've got a communications here from the EV network saying that the and my bank saying that the charging session is finished, and that short charge cost me 56 cents. I could go back to the EV app, and you can see no active sessions, so we're done. Thanks to the WA EV network and Horizon Power for letting me film here at this uh, at this site. Um, I hope you found this. Uh, video useful um, and hope to see you out there in your EV. Cheers!